So welcome everybody. Uh, we're going to start with discussing uh, recursive relations to be used when you want to value uh, life insurance uh, products. So you know from the course on mathematics what a recursive relation is. And in this particular case, or in this particular setting, what we want to do is come up with a quick way to value the insurance product that is sold to a particular um, policyholder with a particular age. And we want to be able to express that value using the value of the product as it would be sold to policyholders with a different age, right? So we're going to play with this, uh, with this age of the policyholder who buys this particular insurance product. We're going to work backwards and we're going to first of all uh, look at annual life tables. Huh? So that means we've got access to a life table with the annual mortality rates and we want to use those to value the product, the whole life insurance product that is sold to an X-year-old. And you may remember from last week that we can denote the actuarial present value of such a product with the notation A. X, right? So this AX, that was the actuarial present value of a one euro benefit whole life insurance product that is sold to an X year. So here we go. Um, let us look at such a life table and let us denote the ultimate age in the life table with omega. So if omega is the ultimate age that an individual can reach according to our life table, then that means that the mortality rate that comes with age omega minus one should be equal to one, right? Because nobody, according to our life table, can survive beyond the ultimate age omega. So this mortality rate, this Q omega minus one, should be equal to one. If this mortality rate is equal to um, one, then the remaining future lifetime, current future lifetime, k omega minus one should be zero because we, um, according to our life table with this ultimate age omega, we're gonna assume that everybody dies before reaching the ultimate age omega. So that means that we've got a very simple expression for the um, act actuarial present value of a one unit benefit whole life insurance product that we sell to a policyholder who has age omega minus one. Because according to the formulas that we studied last week, that becomes the expected value of V to the power K omega minus one plus one. But this K, this curted future uh, lifetime random variable will always take the value of zero. So you're left here between the brackets, not with a random variable, but with a deterministic uh, number and that's just going to be V, right? So we've got a starting point for our recursive relation because we know at the boundary that the expected present value of this whole life insurance product with a one euro benefit sold to a policyholder with H omega minus one, that should be equal to V. So that will be the starting point of our recursion and we're going to work backwards. So the crucial thing is how can we set up this recursive setting? And this is something that you're really going to use a lot throughout exercises, because very often we need to switch from the product sold to an X-year-old to the product sold to somebody with a different age. So, so you have to be, uh, you really need to build up a bit of foundation and a bit of um, uh, skills huh, to play around with the summation formulas in the way that I'm going to demonstrate it here on the sheet. So let us start from the summation formula for the AX, right? So what do I denote? I take the sum over K of V to the power of K plus one. I'll uh, multiply with the survival probability KPX and I multiply with, multiply with the mortality rate QX plus K. And here I let the K go from zero to omega minus X minus one, because that will be the maximum value that my current future lifetime for my x-year-old can uh, take, right? For me, it's also fine if you denote there just plus infinity, huh? um, because that's essentially what, um, or, or that's yeah, in spirit what we mean with this upper bound in my summation form. So what we're going to do now is we're going to write this expression. We're going to write down this expression in, uh, in full. 
Yeah. So that's what you uh, see over here. So if I write the expression in full, I'll get v times qx plus v squared plus times px times qx plus one, and so on and so forth. Uh, and if I um, and if I manipulate this expression a little bit, uh, so what I then can do is I can isolate the first term. That's my v multiplied with the qx, and I can then look at what all the remaining remainder uh, all the remaining terms, what they have in common. And what I see there is indicated in blue. I see that all these terms from the second term on, that they share the expression V multiplied with PX. So that's what I'm going to put in front. And what I, um, that's what I'm going to isolate, what I'm going to put in front. And then the remainder of my expression is this, uh, is what you see here highlighted in, in red, right? So what do I do? I isolate the first term. That's just V multiplied with QX. And from all the return remainder terms, I isolate the V times PX. I put that in front and I ask myself, okay, what is left then hmm, from all the other terms? And of course, when you look, for instance, at this 2PX, then I'm going to use the multiplication rule, right? Because 2px can be written as px multiplied with px plus 1. So that's what I'm doing here. That's what I'm using here. I use the multiplication rule such that I'm capable of putting the vpx in front. But now if you look at this expression in red, what you should recognize there is the expected present value formula for a whole life insurance product with a one euro benefit that is sold, in this case, to an X plus one year old. So not just to an X year old, but an X plus one year old. So that's how we come up with this recursive expression where we can calculate the capital AX if we have access to the value for A, capital A, X plus one. So this is a recursion. It is a backwards recursion because we start from the formula for an X plus one year old and we go back to the formula for an X year old. Right, so this is a, a recursive relation. What is important here that you uh, look at the summation formula carefully, that you uh, try to make sense of these operations, because that will often be necessary, as I already, as I already mentioned, when you're dealing with exercises, and you will often have to play around with uh, the connections between the valuation formulas for an X-year-old and for a different uh, age of my policyholder. Good. So that's something I wanted to uh, start with. What is the intuition behind this formula? So what is the intuition behind this uh, expression that you see here at the top? Well, if we, if we look at the first term, this view, this V multiplied with QX, then that is in fact the value, the present ex expected present value of the benefit that we guarantee in the first year. So that means if we sell an insurance product, with a duration of one year to an X year old. And this insurance product guarantees that if my policyholder dies between time zero and time one, so dies in the first year, then the one euro benefit will be paid at the end of the year. So at the end of the year, in this case means at time one. So if I calculate the expected present value of that product, my discount factor is just V because I have to go from time one to time zero. And the probability that I will have to pay this benefit is the probability QX, the probability that my policyholder will die in the first year after reaching HX, right? So that's how you should see this first term. It's the EPV of a um, term insurance with a duration of one year with a one euro benefit sold to an X year old. But what is then, what is then the second term in my recursion? Well, if we look at the second term, then we're going to value at h x plus one all the benefits from there on. Uh, so, if you die right, uh, if you die in uh, the second year of the contract, if you die in the third year, and so on. So, we're going to look at all these subsequent benefits. We're going to value them at time zero, right? And that's what this capital A x plus one is giving us. Uh, that's the value of the product as if it was issued to an X plus one year old, right? And what we're now gonna do is um, in this uh, recursion uh, formula, we're gonna discount this AX plus one, two times zero, 
But we're going to do that by combining the discount factor over a period of one year, that's the V, with the survival probability. Because, of course, I need to hold uh, or I'm, I'm, I'm offering this product from age X plus one year on in case I survive the first year, right? So there are two um, scenarios captured in this recursion formula intuitively. So there is the first scenario where my policyholder dies between time zero and one, then the EPV of the insurance product for this first year is given by V times QX. If my policyholder survives until age X plus one, then I'm going to offer him the product that is worth a X plus one in expected present value, right? But that starts from time one on. So that's what I still need to discount from time one to time zero. And that's uh, that kind of discounting. I'm doing it here in an actuarial way. So that means I multiply the discount factor V with the survival probability PX. So that gives us a bit of intuition behind this uh, recursive uh, relation. Any questions on that? So we started from the summation formula for AX and we manipulated, transformed it into a recursive expression. Then we looked more carefully at this recursion and we tried to give some intuition by breaking up the duration of our contract from uh, the first year, right? Valuing that first year and then saying, okay, what's gonna happen from time one on? that is captured by this EPV AX plus one. And if we want to know the value of that thing at time zero, we need to uh, discount actuarially with V multiplied with PX.